Hi, I'm Hannah. Welcome to Bridgewater and Taunton College. I'm the Level 3 course leader here for our Art and Design programme, that's the Extended Diploma. And this, since September, we've been working on a project in collaboration with the Taika Festival. Uh, we've worked really closely with them and built a really solid relationship um, and decided to work in a, a creative group. So we've had graphic designers, photographers, uh, fine artists and fashion students work together to create a fashion showcase for you. A, uh, some promotional items as well as some photography shoots. Uh, they're really excited, there's five groups up and coming for you um, and it'll be great to see the work that they've got. Our team name is Oculus and our theme is Hogwarts and this is what we have done. When we started, well when we got the assignment we looked into the different aspects of structure for example, with buildings, they could be old, new, industrial, quite natural buildings as well. We also thought about structure in humans, as the bones, organs, nervous system, and they're all quite different structures. There was also the ones in nature and the metaphoric ones as well, which we looked into, but we eventually decided on a solid building for our structure. Yeah, so um, you think of structure, you think of buildings, and for our survey, I just wanted to get a general sense of what sort of buildings people see as structured. And a trend right now is Hogwarts and Harry Potter characters. And Hogwarts is a very large building, very structural. So we decided we'd base our garment on that. And we decided to go with a cloak or coat, sort of. And we decided to go with the colour green, because on my survey we also found that green is surprisingly a structural colour. Um, and then we went for the merchandise approach and we wanted to do something related to the garment but slightly different as well as something very wearable um, and appropriate for the age range. So we went with the snakes like from Slytherin but we didn't want to make it too much like Slytherin because we wanted to sort of reinvent it um, so that it wasn't like a copyright problem. And we went for like a very structural snake and then we drew some like different sketches with like swords and stuff um, but we went with the simplest one because we felt it was just more appropriate for the age range and we felt like people would wear it more and it just looks cooler but yeah and then we took photos and we did a poster um which we wanted to make it really like, wizardy and magical so we added a glow to the picture to make him look like he was glowing yeah going on with the slytherin theme with the obviously the green garment i wanted to create like a cool kind of like atmosphere as well so, with the final photos, I edited them to make them seem cooler and more, like, atmospheric. So, that kind of go with this living theme rather than just, like, the Hogwarts theme. Mm. Hi, we're GMT and for our project we chose the Willow Cathedral um, because it's a natural source and it's quite sustainable for what we wanted to do and we decided to make a corset out of the willow. And yeah, so, main. Um, for our team, we have different roles and there's two roles mainly for each person. My role is to make the magazine, which consists of like our individual roles behind the scenes and stuff. And Molly's is to make the dress, Jan is the logo, and the corset, and then Toby's video, and Molly's the photographer, so yeah. When doing all the photos, I made sure that I went out to the location first to get like ideas of what I wanted to produce. I also made sure I did a mock photo shoot so that I knew exactly what I needed to do, camera settings, etc., so that it didn't go wrong on the day and it all ran smoothly. So three weeks into the project, we were in high uh, pressure. Um, we were all like, we didn't know what to do. We were, we were so confused of like the whole project, but we had our group chat, like group call through Instagram. And we all talked about like what, <laughs> like something like that's creative, like something new that's never been done. So I came up with a Willow corset so I basically had a background in resistant materials and I kind of like making stuff out of wood. Yeah, we made a plan here, like what 
we, we what we're gonna do? Um, basically for the dress, because it goes underneath the corset, we didn't want it to attract too much attention away from the corset, and um, we just wanted it to kind of hide the skin. So we kind of went for like a simple pencil dress, um, inspired by Isumiaki with the tube um, designs, which he called A-pop designs. Uh, and then yeah. for the video documentary, I started sort of getting behind the scenes shots for what we were doing, and I've got a plan of stuff, if this goes away, um, of all the types of shots I wanted to get. So of like in the classroom, but that turned into like a studio interview. And then after I got all of that, I started sort of compiling the ideas and creating mock-ups, which I then moved into the final documentary. I am the Lego designer. So in here we can see our logo. I chose green and beige because we want to go with the nature theme. And the reason why we chose nature is because we want nature to be more focused on like, I think youth should be more focused into nature because I feel like they're not much focused like today. They're not like, they're just into like TikTok and everything. I also created the corset. Um, it took me like, I don't know how long, but ages because the wood was really hard to cut and I used glue gun to put it all in together. So um, with the corset, the willow was normally green, but I chose to peel the green skin out because it won't stick well. Like using glue gun, it just comes off. So I peeled it off and it comes up with a beige kind of look. And that kind of looks very natural and it kind of fits our color scheme, which is green, beige, and white. And yeah, we took some willow from our location and filled it off. Hi, so I'm Lucy, this is Tommy and Charlotte and Molly and we went down the natural structures route to inspire our garment. So Charlotte's going to start yeah. explaining it to us. So I was the photographer in the group taking photos of the final garment which was inspired by natural patterns that we had all looked at in our secondary research and then we had taken the process for all taking a different element of the brief to look at and I did a lot of different mock shoots for it with different models and then decided on a location a couple of fields away from here and went into the studio on site to take photos. Mm -hmm. me, what did you do? Uh, so I did the poster side of things. So I implemented the, the design within the photo, within the poster, and I used the photo of Molly, which is the model, and showed that her wearing the garment on the poster. So I um, also took on a role of graphic design along with Tommy. So I made the promotional t-shirts, um, taking inspiration from the pattern that we used um, to create the overall design and then I added Taika to it because obviously it's a promotional piece but I ensured that it wasn't the logo specifically so more people are likely to wear it and I took inspiration from graphic like t-shirts which is a very popular trend at the moment so I wanted to replicate a design similar to that. So I also um, helped designing the product. So we looked at different natural structures and decided on using pattern that is used in cabbage. And we wanted to bleach this onto the jeans, which was our garment. That's what we decided on using. So I came up with different designs for this and ways to replicate the pattern in the physical form and in the fashion. So we also did ruffles. Um, and cyanotypes, which Charlotte created, which clearly and like quite obviously display the natural side of our project. Hello, we're Idra, and we went with the structure of the skeleton. 
Uh, I, I'm Drew, and I was in charge of creating one of the promotional items we went with, which was the poster. Um, I'm Jazz, and I'm in charge of um, the fashion garment, and Izzy is... I'm a photographer. I'm Abby, and um, I was kind of in charge of designing the second promotional item, which is the, po the tote bag. Um, yeah. We went with the skeleton because we went like we were never told we had to stick with like a particular structure like buildings or what or whatnot. And a, a lot of the other groups, um, they went with buildings and we weren't really vibing with buildings. Um, so we decided to do something different and I think it really worked out for us. So for the fashion garment um, planning, me and Abby kind of worked together to plan our um, designs because we I'm really indecisive so like I kind of need help with that but um, Abby designed the trousers and I, I kind of just we all had like an opinion with it like something we didn't like something like we did like and yeah and then I basically made the um, patchwork thing which is here in my sketchbook then after Jazz had finished Blue in the patchwork on. Um, I had the trousers which I then painted on and then when designing the tote bag as well I did different research um, into different designs and I've drawn up like different mocks. Yeah and we kind of we kind of just went off of that. Abby kind of designed everything and we just said like what we did or didn't like and we changed it and then we basically made it like that. Yeah, and for the second top, um, I kind of had my own inspiration with it. I wanted to be like um, kind of simple, like wearable, but like different. And yeah, um, I tried out loads of stuff. Um, the top was going to be made out of elastic, but it didn't hold its shape. So I decided we decided to do it out of wire which was kind of challenging, but then we kind of worked with it anyway. I'm Sam, this is Jaden, this is Belle, this is Daisy, and we focused on the Firepool pump house along Firepool Lock, um, because we wanted to focus more on a deserted or more mundane building and see if we can give it a bit of life and make it more interesting. We chose this building due to the, the beautiful structure of it and the the lovely red brick colour of it. I came up with different designs related to take characteristics from the building and to try and take the main characteristics from the building to add to the outfit. Um, like the brickwork, the different windows, the whole actual structure of the building as it's like a really big broad broad structure. Um, I took took a lot of the vines as well on the side of it and added it to the side of the sleeve here. I tried to direct all those points um, to replicate like where it was on the building. Like on the sleeve here, there's like one side has the vines and the sign. And on the back it also has the sign as is placed on the building itself. Um, the colouring, um, of course the main um, obvious colour is the red, as I use for the red velvet parts, and there's the grey parts underneath. I also did a lot of research into the actual um, signs itself, which I found were adverts for um, Van Heusen, and they do um, collars and shirts. This I uh, replicated it in this way here with a removable collar. Also kept to the theme um, sustainability and um, all the materials I've used for this outfit here are all either what I've had at home or what people have given to me for like second hand. Um, I, made, I made it mostly from a, my brother's old suit because it was falling apart and, and I took parts of it because there was um, a lot of moth damage on it so I removed parts like the sleeve and the leg because they were not usable anymore. Would you say that added more character to the actual corset, more like how there's character to the building because it's more broken and abandoned? Yes, it is. Um, 
Yeah, I made sure to keep the loose threads to show show how it was falling apart. Like this maybe used to be a pristine building and it's fallen apart over the time and I showed it in here, maybe it being a nice pristine um, suit, but it felt, felt fallen apart over the time, having parts missing, sleeves coming off. So what I focused on mainly was the location and angles since we wanted to really show how the building inspired the garment. So I wanted to make it so the angle was low so you could see the garment and the aspects that were on the building that were also added onto the garment. And then to keep with the whole colour scheme of the red and like the kind of abandoned thing, I made it so the green grass was turned more into like an orange brown. So then it kind of blended in with all of the photographs together. And I had to work with the fence that surrounded the building. So I kind of like included that into some of the photographs of the photo shoot. And to kind of make it more, I don't know, pleasing to the eye, I removed it so we went to a bridge that was a bit further away from the building, but in the photographs you could still see the building in the background. And that's kind of how it all turned out. So basically, um, I designed the posters and I made in total um, three ones that I was happy with. But the, there is one that was my favourite, which was the first one that I made, where I basically just kept the orange colour scheme, which I kind of kept with all the posters. But what I did was I took the photos of the building, I went out a day, took photos of the building, and then to make it look like it matched the poster better, I edited all the other colours out of the, fo the photos and um, just showed the orange because I felt like that was quite a, like, a bold characteristic of the building that I wanted to keep. And I basically kept that orange colour scheme throughout the whole um, posters. But um, then I did make two other posters, but um, I could edit the pictures in a way to make them slightly more red. So I made one poster that was um, had a red style to it. Um, and also, I did edit with the photos slightly to use a, a liquefied effect where it basically stretches the image until it creates like lines that are from the image and I used that in one of the posters. But, um, also, I before I started uh, designing the main posters I wanted to make a mock-up poster before I started just um, because I didn't have any photos of the building yet. So I had a picture of a building from Bristol and I basically just tried figuring out how to make a poster with a structure in it and just, just to practice before. I'll talk about what I did. So I did most of the research um, because luckily, well not luckily, but last year I was doing already my second year in this project, um, in this in this degree and I um, I was able to do a lot more research on this building because I did that last year so I was able to incorporate some of that into this project so I was able to draw on some of that and luckily I still have this sketchbook here which is from last year which I used for the project last year and um, it helped me come up with the idea very quickly so we could get the ball rolling on what structure to use um, we haven't used anything that I've that I did last year because we wanted to give it like a more fresh sort of you know and I wanted everyone to sort of do their own thing and bring it together which I think we've done very well as a team I've also been doing the documentary for our project as well um, which I don't have anything to show right now but that should be finished sometime soon because we've all done different parts of it um, and I think again that draws on us coming together as a group very strongly because we were able to do our own thing and bring it all together.